بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وحبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد آل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الهداة المهديين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كان هذا الأكو إذا لا أفضل أحسنت In the past few nights we spoke about taqwa and how to achieve taqwa immunity from haram protection from haram from the sins from the dunya we said that fasting is a tool that helps us in achieving taqwa by strengthening our willpower and by teaching us patience. And then we said another tool that helps us in developing taqwa, protection from the temptations of the dunya, was basira. That is when you see the true nature of the dunya, you will not run towards it, but rather you will keep your distance from the dunya. You will not want it. Another tool that helps us and achieving taqwa is the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. The ones that fear God, they have the true taqwa. They have the true wara. How? When we look at fear, brothers and sisters, fear can be a positive emotion in our lives. Because fear can be the best deterrent from evil for us human beings. Fear, many times, it makes us human beings behave. Just take the example, for example, for example, of speeding, speeding on the highway. Sometimes you wake up late, correct? And you have to go to work or you have to go to school and you're late. You want to drive very fast, right? Over the speed limit. But what prevents you many times from doing that? What prevents you from breaking that law? It's uh, the fear of the law that you have, correct? The police that is patrolling the highway. If you knew there was no police, then you would speed. Just like tonight, I was a little late and the highway was empty. Nobody on the highway. I wanted to speed 100 miles an hour. I'm wearing my seatbelt and I'm focused and the, the, the highway is empty. So it looks safe, correct? But what prevents me? Because I know there are certain patrol cars, there are certain officers, police that are hiding and they will give you a ticket. So that fear that we have from the law, from the accountability and the punishment of the law, it will make us behave. This is good fear. Because if this fear was not there, people would be like wild animals, right? We would drive like crazy, we would, people would infringe on others' rights, we would oppress each other. So that fear that we have from the law is positive fear, it is good. The same thing, apply it to the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. A mu'min, a believer that has taqwa fears God. Why does he fear God? Is Allah a zalim? Does Allah oppress us? No. We do not fear God because we fear His oppression. We fear Him because we fear His justice. If I act unjustly either towards people or towards myself by sinning, Allah Azza wa Jal is just. And he will hold me accountable. So fear of Allah, we mean fear of the accountability of God. Or else Allah is merciful. Some people, they don't understand. Why should I fear a merciful Lord? It's because at the same time that he is merciful, he's just. Remember, you can't disregard his other quality of being just. And being just means that he will hold us all accountable on the day of judgment. A wise individual would be afraid of the accountability. He knows that one day this life will end and Allah will hold him accountable for everything. Once he dies and he is placed in the grave, Allah will ask him about every act. Allah will ask him about every word that he said. If I oppress other people, Allah will hold me accountable in my grave. Of course I should be afraid of that day where I am placed in the grave because that will be the day of my reckoning. As we said in the hadith uh, earlier, إِذَا قَامَتْ إِذَا مَاتَ ابْنُ آدَمْ The Imam says, قَامَتْ قِيَامَتُهُ When the human being dies, his qiyama, his reckoning, his day of judgment begins in the grave. And that's why when you read Dua Abi Hamza Thamali, this beautiful dua, the Imam's, the Imam, he shows us his taqwa, his fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. In one beautiful passage of Dua Abi Hamza, he says, أَبْكِي لُخُرُوجِ 
نفسي أبكي لظلمة قبري أبكي لضيق لحدي لضيق لحدي أبكي لسؤال منكر ونكير إياه The Imam says, I cry because there is something that will await me the day that I die. I cry because of the fear of that day. And remember, the Imam is ma'soom. He's teaching us. He's impeccable. He's infallible. He says, I cry for the day that my soul will depart this world. The day that I die and they will place me all alone in my dark grave. I'm all by myself. I have no one there with me. I have no one there with me in that dark grave and it's a very tight, confined, small area in the grave. And then the Imam says, I cry because of the two angels. Allah will send the two angels, Nakir and Munkar, to question me, to hold me accountable for everything that I did. Of course, an individual that knows this, that believes in the Akhirah, that believes there's a hereafter, would be afraid of that accountability. And this same very accountability is what deters me from haram, is what keeps me away from sinning. So those individuals that have taqwa, they must have fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the fear of Allah protects them from the dangers, protects them from the sins of this dunya. You saw how during this pandemic, there were some people, they were very afraid of the virus. They never left their house, right? They never left the house. They're always wearing not mask, but two masks. And they're very afraid. Not, they would not go near anyone. That fear of theirs, now sometimes we may exaggerate, but the point is that fear of theirs is what gave them protection from the virus, right? There were some people who were careless. They didn't care about these laws and they got the virus and they died. And they died. I remember even there was a, um, I think a congressman somewhere in the U.S., a Republican congressman who didn't care about these laws. He didn't wear a mask and whatnot, and he did not social distance. He got the virus, and he eventually died a couple of months ago. But some individuals, their fear was what protected them from the virus. A mu'min, a believer, uses the fear that he has from Allah Azza wa Jal to protect himself from the dangers of this dunya, to protect himself from the temptations of the dunya, and to protect himself from the sins. Allah Azza wa Jal says that in the Holy Quran. He says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَ النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى As for those individuals that fear Allah Azza wa Jal. When you fear Allah, what does that lead to? It leads to taqwa, because right after that Allah says, وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى Those that fear God, and then because of their fear of Allah, they refrain from indulging in the dunya. They refrain from sins. They refrain from the temptations of the dunya. They stay away from haram. So their fear of Allah is what gives them taqwa. So one of the sources of taqwa is the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. When you fear Him, you fear His accountability. You fear the day that you will be placed in the grave and Allah will hold you accountable for everything you did. Obviously, you're going to be afraid from haram. It's like there's someone, there's a camera watching you 24-7. Be careful. You want to do this haram. You want to do that haram. It's all being recorded. And Allah will question you. Allah will hold you accountable and may punish me on the day of judgment. So this fear in itself is positive fear that prevents me from exceeding the limits of Allah Azza wa Jal. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam when he became the Khalifa. Subhanallah, any type of taqwa that we speak about, Amir al-Mu'mineen is the embodiment of that taqwa is the embodiment of that wara. As we spoke about, for example, taqwa through basira, we gave the examples of Amir al muminin Likewise, taqwa, you want to see the example of taqwa through fear of Allah Azza wa Jal? Just look at the life of Amir al muminin alayhi salam. When he became the Khalifa, Amir al muminin had friends. So these friends, they came to him and they thought Imam Ali was like the other Khulafa. That when you reach power, you bring your friends Right? And you give them from the Bayt al-Mal. Use their, they use their connections so that the Khalifa can give them what they want. Imam Ali alayhi salam became the Khalifa. People came to him. His relatives came to him. His friends came to him. Ya Ali, give me from Bayt al-Mal. They wanted Imam Ali to be a corrupt Khalifa like other Khulafa. But Imam Ali alayhi salam, what made him distinct from the other Khulafa was that he had taqwa. Subhanallah, when you have taqwa, that's all you need. 
When you have that immunity from haram, that's all you need. Imam Ali had taqwa. So they came to Imam Ali. Ya Ali, give me this from Baytul Mal. Give me that from Baytul Mal. Imam Ali used to give. But he used to give everyone an equal share. Some of his relatives and some of his friends, they wanted more because they want to use that connections. So Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he went on the member. And he wanted to make it clear that I, Ali, am different from all the other people that came before me. I fear Allah Azza wa Jal. I will not sell my soul to please you human beings. I will never disobey Allah by pleasing a human being. He went on the member and he gave a beautiful sermon. He said, Wallahi la'an abita ala hasak al-sa'dani musahada. He says, Wallahi, if I were to sleep on the sa'dan. Sa'dan is a type of plant that is filled with thorns and prickles. If you just put your hand on it, your hand will bleed. It's very sharp. He says, if I sleep my entire body naked, I sleep on that sa'dan. He says, this is number one. Or, or I would be tied in chains and I would be dragged against the ground, against the floor like a criminal, like a prisoner. He says, these two types of punishment and torture they are better for me and easier in my eyes. أحب إلي من أن ألقى الله ورسوله يوم القيامة ظالما لبعض العباد أو غاصبا لشيء من الحطام. He says that would be better to be dragged against the thorns and sleep on the thorns or dragged against the the floor with chains. That's better for me than to face Allah and His Messenger on the Day of Judgment. Knowing that I have oppressed someone, knowing that I have stolen, usurped any money, any of the hutam, the ruins of this dunya. No way. I would never do that. Kill me before I would do that, the Imam says. Torture me before I would do that. Why, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen? Why? Just give out to your relatives, give out to your friends. What do you fear? And then the Imam, he gives the justification. The Imam, then he says, He says, how can I usurp any money of this dunya, any ruins of this dunya? How can I oppress anyone when in a few days I will die and I will be placed six feet under? I will not live in this life forever. There is a day where this dunya will end and I will be placed in my grave, Imam Ali says, and I will be asked by Allah Azza wa Jal. So it is because of my fear of Allah that prevents me from just giving out money to everyone. This is Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This is the taqwa of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. He says that I'm going to die one day and I'll be held accountable. Of course I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die one day. We're all going to die one day. And that's why, because of that day of accountability, I will not exceed the boundaries of Allah. I will never oppress anyone, nor will I ever steal or usurp anything. Never will I be a corrupt individual. And then the Imam gave a story. A story of his own brother Aqil, his older brother Aqil. He says that one day Aqil came to me. Wallah, walaqad istamahani Aqil min burrikum sa'a. He says, Aqil. Oh, he says, Wallahi, walaqad ra'aytu Aqilan waqad amlaq. He says, one day my brother Aqil, he is in need. So he comes to me, I'm the Khalifa, his brother. Obviously, I would give him whatever he wants. And Aqil didn't ask for too much. Aqil himself was a good man. He just asked me for sa'a. That's it. Sa'a means what? Just some wheat. Three kilograms of wheat is called sa'a. How much is that worth, brothers and sisters? This is Imam Ali. He was the emperor of the of the Islamic kingdom. He could have given Aqil billions. But Aqil just asked for three kilograms of wheat. Maybe it's worth, I don't know, $10, $15. Imam Ali had already given Aqil his share from Bayt al-Mal. Aqil wanted more. But Aqil was in need. So he says, وَرَأَيْتُ صُبْيَانَهُ شُعْثَ الشُعُورِ غُبْرَ الْأَلْوَانِ مِنْ فَقْرِهِمْ كَأَنَّمَا سُوِّدَتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ بِالْعُظْلِمِ He says, and I looked at my nephews, the sons of Aqil. I could tell that they were in need. You could see poverty on their faces, from their clothing, from their just expressions. So he asked me for three kilograms of wheat because I'm his brother. He wants to use the connection of brother so that I give him some of the Bayt al-Mal extra. 
right? I favor him over, over other people. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Aqil came to me and he, he was insisting, Yeah, Ali, just give me three kilograms of wheat. So the Imam says, Fa'awadani mu'akkida wa karrara alayya al qawla muraddida. He kept on insisting. He says, Fa'asgaytu lahu sam'i. Imam Ali says, I listened to my brother Aqil. Fa'dhanna anni abi'ahu dini wa attabi'a qiyadahu mufariqan tariqati. And he thought, that I accepted. He thought that I would sell my religion. Allahu Akbar. Imam Ali uses this ex exact expression. He thought that I would sell my religion to him by giving him the three kilograms. And I would follow his way rather than the way of Allah. So he told him, okay, Aqil, I'm going to come back. Aqil, as they say, he was blind towards the end of his life. So Aqil can't see. Is there. Imam Ali says, wait a couple of minutes, inshallah, I'll bring you what you need. Imam Ali says, I went, I didn't get him the three kilograms because this is haram. He said, I went and I took a piece of metal, a metal rod, and I began to heat it. I began to heat it over fire until it was scorching hot. He says, then I took that hadida, فَأَحْمَيْتُ لَهُ حَدِيدَةً ثُمَّ أَدْنَيْتُهَا مِنْ جِسْمِهِ Then I brought it close to the body of Aqil can't see. He didn't touch the body of Aqil, he just brought it close until Aqil began to feel the heat. He says when Aqil began to feel the heat of that metal rod, he started to scream, Ouch! He said, Ouch! What are you doing, Ya Ali? I ask you for help, you want to burn me? Imam Ali says, I told him, Woe unto you, Ya Aqil! You should be better than this! He told him, Ya Aqil, أتخشى من من حديدة أحماها إنسانها للعبه وتجرني إلى نار سجرها جبارها لغضبه أتأن من الأذى ونائل أأن من لظى. He says, Ya Aqil, you were afraid of this fire of the dunya that I, a weak human being, had ignited. This metal rod, I, Ali ibn Abi Talib, one of the creation of God, had put it over the fire of the dunya and it did not even touch you. It just came close to you and you screamed. And you want to drag me to the fires of Allah Azza wa Jal Jahannam? Is that fair? When you cannot tolerate the heat of this metal rod, you want me to tolerate Jahannam of Allah? So Imam Ali considers, if I give three kilograms of wheat to my brother Aqil, which is extra, I shouldn't do that. It's as if I will being burned in the fires of hell. Look at the taqwa of Amir al-Mu'mineen Have you seen anyone like that, brothers and sisters, that has taqwa to this level, that he's not willing to do haram, no matter what? This is the spiritual immunity that we spoke about. If you remember when we spoke in the beginning, uh, about in the earlier topics about taqwa and the two types of taqwa, we said that some rulers in the world today, like we said and they gave the example of Iraq, once they went into power, they began to de de devour everything and take billions and pass billions to their family members, multi-millions, because they didn't have the second type of taqwa. No fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, he would not give even three kilograms of wheat to his own brother. To his own brother. Because he had that taqwa of Allah azza wa jal. When you fear Allah, when you have that taqwa, this is what it does to you. It prevents you. It's a barrier between you and the haram. You will never go close to the haram. So the Imam alayhi salam gives this example. He's telling people, oh human beings, oh people, my own brother could not bribe me. My own brother, when he asked me for extra money, for extra help, I brought him a metal rod. So do not expect any corruption from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Do not expect any favors from the commander of the faithful because I, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, have taqwa. This is taqwa, is when I fear the accountability of Allah azza wa jal. And when you look at the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam, all you see is taqwa, fear of Allah. There's another story that Abu Darda narrates about the taqwa of Imam Ali. He says, one day I went to the masjid, I saw some of the sahaba of Rasulullah. This is after Imam Ali was killed. I saw some of the sahaba and the tabi'een. The tabi'een who were the second generation after the sahaba. He said, I saw them, they were sitting and they were speaking about the companions of Rasulullah. Each one was mentioning a name of one of the sahaba of Rasulullah. They mentioned all of them except Imam Ali. 
So he told them Abu Darda was a companion of Imam Ali. He loved Imam Ali. He told them, but you forgot one of the greatest Sahaba of Rasulullah. Let me tell you about one of them who had the least amount of money. كان أقلهم مالا ولكن أكثرهم ورعا. He had the least amount of money, Imam Ali, but he had the most wara'. Wara'. We said was taqwa, fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, that protection and immunity from haram. So they told me, who is it? I said, Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, Subhanallah. As soon as I mentioned the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib, they all frowned at me. They turned their head. It's as if I mentioned the name of Abu Jahl. They all. These are the Sahaba of Rasulullah and the Tabi'een. He says, when I mentioned the name of Ali, they all frowned. What are you talking about? So then Abu Darda, he said, but let me share a story. Let me tell you what I witnessed from Ali ibn Abi Talib. Before you judge him, subhanAllah, the Khalifa, the greatest companion of Rasulullah. What happened to these Sahaba, to these individuals, that when the name of Ali would be mentioned, they would frown. See the envy, what it does to some people. So he says, let me share a story. What's the story? He says, one day, I was walking outside Medina, in a place of farms, it's all nakhil, it's all uh, palm trees. Um, I thought I was all by myself. It's at night, nobody there. All of a sudden, I hear someone reading munajat. The most beautiful munajat I had ever heard in my life. He said, I listened closely. I noticed it is Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. He's all by himself reciting munajat with Allah azza wa jal. He says, I heard him say these words. Let me read you some of the munajat of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. He says, the Imam was saying, Ilahi kam min mubiqatin hamaltuha faqabaltaha bin'amatik wa kam min jariratin takarramta an kashfiha bi karamik. Ya Allah, how many times I have sinned, I have disobeyed, I have made mistakes but you have concealed my mistakes and my sins and you have give gave me more and more and more na'am we sin but allah gives us na'am all we do is evil and holy gives us is good and remember this is imam ali who's ma'soom as we said imam ali alayhi salam because he feels he can never do enough for allah this is how he speaks or else the imam never disobeys him he never disobeys allah azza wa jal and then he said ilahi in tala fi asyanika umri wa azma fi as-suhfi dhanbi fama ana bi ghayri ghufranika tami' wa la ana bi rajin ghayra ridwanik ya allah if you give me a long life and if i sin and sin so much ya allah I will never lose hope in your mercy. I will always have hope in your mercy, in your rahmah, in your maghfirah, no matter how far I am, how negligent I am, how much I forget you, but I will always have hope in your mercy. He says, then Imam Ali stopped. He prayed a few rak'ahs. He says, I was watching, he didn't know. And he continued in his beautiful munajat. He says, the Imam started saying, in that beautiful munajat, brothers and sisters, try to take a few minutes in Ramadan at night and read these munajat. We are the ones that have to read. Not Imam Ali. Imam Ali was impeccable. He was ma'soom, infallible. We are the ones that sin every day. Every day we sin how many times? Read these beautiful munajat of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. The Imam then said, Ilahi ufakkiru fi afwaka fatahunu alayya khati'ati ثم أذكر العظيم من أخذك فتعظم علي بليتي. He says, Ya Allah, I'm in a dilemma. I think on one hand of your mercy. And thus I say, you know what, let me sin, it's no big deal. But on the other hand, I think about your accountability. I think about the grave. I think about the day of judgment and you will hold me accountable for everything. So once again, I begin to panic. I begin to lose hope. So I am between these two feelings of hope, mercy, hope, fear, hope, fear. This is how the human being is. Bain al khawfi wal raja between hope and fear. The Imam continues. This is all Abu Darda narrating. He says the Imam then said, Ah, in ah, in ana karatu fi sohofi say atan ana nasi ha 
وأنت محصيها فتقول خذوا He says woe unto me on the day of judgment when Allah shows me the book of my a'mal and I see in that book of a'mal every single sin is mentioned there the Quran says ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة They say the Quran says on the day of judgment the evil doers the sinners Allah will give them their book of a'mal and every single bad deed every single haram every zulm that they did Allah has recorded it they forget about it but Allah does not forget they will say woe unto me what is this book everything is mentioned in it the imam says when you give me that book what will I do where will I go to and then the imam says فَيَا لَهُ مِنْ مَأْخُوذٍ لَا تُنْجِيهِ عَشِيرَتُهُ وَلَا تَنْفَعُهُ قَبِيلَتُهُ He says on the day of judgment when Allah shows me my bad deeds and the accountability who do I run to? When we have a problem in this dunya we go to our father, our mother, our children, our family members, our tribes, correct? On the day of judgment the Quran says يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ Your money won't help you, your children, your family members won't help you. So where do I go? What do I do? And then finally the Imam said آهن من نار تنضج الأكباد والكلا آهن من نار نزاعة للشوى He says woe unto me from the fire of hell From the hell fire What will I do? Allahu Akbar If Imam Ali speaks to Allah in this way How should you and I speak brothers and sisters When our entire lives is sin far from Allah So then Abu Darda says after the Imam said these beautiful words of munajat he said the Imam was silent. I waited, waited. He was silent. I went to check on him. He said, I noticed he had fallen on the earth, unconscious. I moved him. Ya Ali ibn Abi Talib, wake up. He would not wake up. He says, I thought Ali ibn Abi Talib had died. Something happened to him. I said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. I then rushed to the house of Fatima alayhi salam. This is when Fatima alayhi salam was alive. He says, I went to the house of Fatima and I told her, Ya Fatima, عظم الله لك الأجر. Your husband Ali ibn Abi Talib has died. She asked me, what happened? I told her the story. She told me, no, Ya Abad Darda, هذه الغشة التي تأخذه من خشية الله. This happens to Ali every night. Because of his fear of Allah, he passes out unconscious. Every night. Have you ever heard of a human being who has so much fear from Allah such that he falls unconscious because of his fear. Only one man, brothers and sisters, and that is Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. That's why he would never come close to the dunya. That's why Imam Ali alayhi salam had the highest levels of taqwa and wara'ah. When you have that fear of Allah azza wa jal, this is how you become. Let us ask Allah to give us some of that fear that Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam had. I know we hate Hearing about fear. I hate we hear so many young people. They tell me, please say, don't mention Nar Jahannam. I try to not mention it as much as possible. But brothers and sisters, hundreds of verses in the Quran, Allah mentions it. Do I just take them out of the Quran and create my own religion? This is a reality, brothers and sisters, that we will be placed in our graves one day. And Allah will ask us about all of our deeds. The only thing that will help you, brothers and sisters, is your taqwa when you are in the grave. So let us learn from the lessons of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam during this month of Ramadan. Ask Allah to give you that taqwa, to give you that fear. Inshallah, this Ramadan becomes different than all the other Ramadans. Inshallah. Hada wa akhru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin.